This is Professor Sanchez, and I want to talk to you a little bit about And Him in Honor of Beauty by Edmund Spencer. You're reading this poem this week, and it's a bit challenging because of language and just the nature of poetry. So I wanted to take you through at least the first half of the poem. We're going to read the first 23 stanzas together and just give you a bit of an overview of each stanza so that you can get the hang of it. And then by the end of the poem, hopefully you can go from there and interpret the rest yourself. So we're gonna just start at the beginning. The first stanza, he talks about being carried away by love, by passion, the idea that love is overwhelming. But this poem is not about love, this poem is about beauty. So in the second stanza, he talks about worshiping love, but that this poem will honor love's mother. And love's mother, he says, is beauty. Okay? He says that beauty is even more powerful and enchanting than love. It's the thing that sort of drives the love, right? So when we go to stanza three, here he asks for a blessing on the poem. He talks about how much he worships beauty and he asks, um, asks her to, to bless the poem. He says, um, do you promise with your love kindling light to light my own dim and dulled eye and make this hymn, this poem of yours beautiful? In the fourth stanza, he's talking about beauty as a force. Um, the idea of love ha or beauty having the power to make him or break him, to um, take everything out of him or to fill him up. I love this line where he says, um, it may so please that she at length will stream some dew of grace into my withered heart, that that beauty has the power to, you know, make his heart full again, or even just a little bit of trace of, of love coming back into his heart. Okay, moving on to the next stanzas, we're going to look at five and six. And these talk about how God created beauty, but it's not always seen. Sometimes it's hidden away or... Um, it's sort of a rare prized thing. He also talks about how beauty is heavenly. It's beyond human in these two stanzas. Moving on to stanzas seven and eight. He talks about how beauty infuses the mortals and the world with spirit and with light um, that Beauty is the thing that, that brings us, you know, all of this light into our world. Continuing on, he talks about how, um, how beauty in stanza nine, that's here. He talks about how beauty cannot come any other way, um, that it, you can't sort of, um, it's, it's lit from this, this idea of beauty. It's consuming, it's tantalizing, it can be deceptive, it takes, it has this power to it. So he's continuing to build on this idea that, um, if we kind of summarize so far, love can carry us away, it's overpowering, and he worships love, but he's even more in awe of beauty as the source of love, the thing that inspires us, the thing that can take us, you know, break our hearts and fill our hearts. It's created by God. It's like brought into this world as light and it infuses our world with spirit and with light. Um, but it also can, can take and has a lot of control over what we do. Okay, I hope you're with me so far. Stanza 10, my favorite stanza. I love this stanza. How vainly then do idle wits invent? So basically he's saying like, how stupidly do these idiots say 
<laughs> that's my translation, um, that beauty is not else but mixture made. So you just kind of mix some things together, you get beauty. You mix together colors, you mix together temperament, complexion, that shall quickly, quickly fade and pass away, like to a summer's shade. So the way that, um, you know, the light is on the ground, maybe, and then the sun shifts, and the shadows of the tree take up the ground in, in darkness, he's saying the same thing. Isn't that a beautiful image? That this light of beauty, that if you're saying that beauty comes from things that are just like how somebody's face looks or the color of their skin or what their temperament is like, then that's kind of dumb. That's what he's saying. Um, that That's not true. Beauty is this infusion of light from the inside. In the next stanza, he talks about the power of seeing beauty and how that can change your heart, it can change your mind, it can change your actions. He says that it can rob both sense and reason blind, that you, you won't even be able to like be logical <laughs> when you're in the, in the throes of beauty. Okay, so then here he raises a question. If this is the case, why don't we have this reaction when we look at flowers? Or when we look at a painting of flowers or a beautiful woman, why why is it not the same? And his answer to that question is that it's more than that. Beauty is not outward or an impression of something. It's, it's more than that. It's more internal. And he says, physical beauty will fade, right? He says, um, the cheeks are sprinkled um, with the, the red and white goodly hues shall decay, um, sweet rosy leaves so fairly spread upon the lips shall fade and fall away, um, the golden wire, those sparkling stars so bright shall turn to dust and lose their light. So it's, it's going to happen. Beauty is, physical beauty is going to fade. And then here, I love this stanza too, but, important word, that fair lamp from whose celestial ray the light proceeds, which kindleth lover's fire, shall never be distinguished or decay. But when the vital spirits do expire. So right, so that that light inside of us that makes people beautiful, it's not the physical things, it's this light inside. And that light inside cannot be distinguished. Even when someone dies, when the vital spirits do expire, they're going to go back and be a star in the sky because that's where the light came from, right? And this next stanza explains that a little bit more. It talks about when when created as humans, um, this beauty that's inside people is taken from the stars, right? It's just this light. And in the following stanza after that, it talks about um, the, the person who is beautiful then all of their life, and he uses like the example of like a house, all of the life will be blessed in this light and this beauty. Continuing on, the next couple stanzas, he's talking about how having this light within you sculpts your form to beauty too, so that if your soul is beautiful, that you look beautiful on the outside also. Um, and how having that inner light changes the way that you look to others, lights you up to others. Okay, and then here, he's talking about um, a beautiful person and how you can see into, into their soul. You can see that they're good. And then here it shifts again. The next three stanzas talk a little bit about what about people who have a good soul or have like this beautiful spirit to them, but they're not like physically beaut beautiful to you, whatever that definition is when you look upon them. And his interpretation is that sometimes a good person is not physically beautiful, okay? It could be, as he says here, that their light was darkened by life. So like some kind of trauma or difficulty darkened their light inside or was stolen by others who wanted to capitalize or steal their beauty or play with their beauty, right? 
And then the last stanza we're going to talk about um, is this one right here. This is stanza 23. And he says, this is not the fault of beauty, but theirs that do abuse it unto ill. So it's the fault of those who are corrupt and who take advantage of beauty that this beauty or this light is darkened. Um, and he says that, um, nonetheless, the soul is fair and beauteous still. However flesh's fault it filthy make, so however the, the mortal kind of your life and your mortality, however your experiences make the soul or try to make beauty filthy, um, beauty is an immortal thing taken from the stars, right, this light, and no corruption can take away the beauty of your soul. So, so far in the poem, we have this idea that beauty is the, is the mother of love, and beauty is something that is not external and is not mortal, but immortal, something that is taken from the stars and placed inside of us, and something that transforms someone's life and transforms someone's appearance because of this light inside of them. On the other hand, sometimes people try to take this light away or life darkens it, but it doesn't go away because beauty is immortal and cannot be ruined by a mortal life. So keep reading, um, keep trying to enjoy some of the beautiful lines within this poem and also its beautiful message um, that sometimes we need to think a little bit more about and internalize in our lives to see the light in others. Um, personally, I'm someone who really believes that um, it is that light inside people that makes them beautiful. And, and beauty is something that bubbles out from the inside because of people's beautiful hearts. Um, so I hope that you're seeing that interpretation in the poem and also taking you know your own personal interpretation and connection to it as well. Good luck.